water. In my personal opinion, water is one of the most difficult things for you to try and recreate. From the flow and the way it looks, to the way that the light bounces off it. But thankfully, Inkscape has us covered. Hello my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back again with another Inkscape tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you how you can create the ripple effect within Inkscape. So without further ado, let's get started. Now as you can see on my screen, I have downloaded an image from Pexels.com and it is just this mountain range with the water from a lake being reflective so we can see the silhouette of the mountain in the reflection of the water i think it is an absolutely beautiful image but i'm going to add some text so when you first start and you have the image as the background that you want i'm going to come to my text tool on the left hand side give that a click and now i'm going to click anywhere just so i can get the cursor up and i'm going to start typing now we have our text, of course it is kind of blending in, so I'm going to make it white, like so, and I'm going to also increase the size so it's quite big. And with it increased, I am just going to put this right on the horizon. So as you can see, this flat line where you can no longer see any more of the lake, that's where I'm going, right there. And now I'm going to change the text as well because I want a different font. I don't think that is quite thick enough. So is I'm going to come to the right hand side and I'm going to open my text editor by clicking on this letter T right here. With that done, this will bring up your text editor. Now yours might look a little bit different to mine because I'm running on the 1.4 beta. So, these are all my text fonts. If you are running on a previous version, what you may find is you will have two columns, one with the text name, and once you've selected it, you can select the style on the right-hand side, whether it is italic or bold. Now, personally, I love the play font. So, I'm going to use play, but I'm going to make it bold. And as you can see, this is a lot better, a lot closer to what I'm looking to create. Now, in order to get this ripple effect that we want, we are going to need to duplicate this text. But before we do that, I want to convert it to a path. Now, you don't have to convert it to a path if you don't want. It will still work technically, but I just prefer to do it as a rule of thumb. So we're going to go path, object to path. Alternatively, you can press Control, Shift, and C in order to do the same thing. Now, as you can see in the bottom, it is no longer a text object, it is a path object. So now that we have our path, we are going to duplicate it. Again, hold Control and press D, or right click and duplicate. Once you have, you will see that there is another copy. With this copy, we are going to flip it. So in order to flip it and have it mirrored, we need to come up to the top properties toolbar right here and this object flip vertical needs to be pressed. And just like that, we now have it flipped. Now I am just going to click and drag this down while holding control to lock it vertically until it snaps onto this point. Now, if you haven't got snapping enabled, you can find the snapping tool up in the top right corner right here make sure that's enabled and then when you drag this down it will already snap perfectly into place now when it comes to this bottom word we don't want it to look exactly the same we want it to have distorted quite a bit so what i'm going to do is just bring this up a little bit and then I am just going to add a gradient to this. Now the gradient isn't really needed, but I think it gives a really cool effect. 
So in order to do that, you're going to need your fill and stroke menu open. Again, on the right hand side, you can find your fill and stroke menu right here. Give that a click and it will open your fill and stroke menu. I'm going to use a linear gradient on this one, which is this second box along right here. I'm also going to leave the colors exactly the same as they are. But what I'm going to do is move this start point to the top and I'm going to move the end point directly underneath to the bottom. Now in order to get it to lock onto the vertical or horizontal axis, hold control and drag down until you get near the bottom or wherever you want to place it. And now if I click off it, as you can see, it looks way more convincing, but also it doesn't look quite right. Well, there's a couple more things that we can do in order to get the effect that we want. First, we're going to need to select the reflection and then come up to our filters. And you can either go into your filter gallery or come down to distort and then select ripple. Now instantly you can see the difference that this has made, but there is one step further you can go to tweak this even more. By going back up to the filters menu, you can go to your filter editor. Now when you've got your filter editor open, this menu will appear on the right hand side. Now these are all the settings for our filter. If we come down to size, for example, and we turn that all up. If I zoom in just a bit, you can see that it has made way more detail. So it looks more pixelated. This is how you're going to tweak all the different areas and get them to look exactly how you want, just by controlling these sliders. Now, my suggestion is to play around with these. You can change the type as well. As you can see, this has a much lesser effect than having turbulence on. And there will be different modes and different types of options that you can change for every single filter that you apply. But this one, I want to go with the displacement map. Now the displacement is how much it's going to variate when it comes to each of the jagged edges. So if we increase it, as you can see, it gets very, very obscure. So now you can make sure that you get the exact level of ripples that you want. Now this water in my picture is not very wavy. It's kind of still. You can just see a few of the ripples around here. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to make sure that these ripples are also fairly small. I don't want them to be too big. And there you have it. You now have your ripple effect. There is one extra thing that you can also do. If you like, you can select the ripple effect and you can add a blend mode. As you can see, I'm in my fill and stroke menu. I will come down to the bottom where it says blend mode. And I like to use things like overlay. Let's see how that looks. And there you go. I think that looks pretty much perfect. So just by adding a blend mode, a reflection with the ripple effect on it, you can get some very, very cool water reflections. Did you know that you could become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? Well, now you do. You will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel, enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.